Homestead was awesome in just about every way as a race. Every way that a fan could want this race to be good, whether it be the racing on the track, whether it be the best of the best up front, the strategy, the racetrack itself, the playoffs, whatever you're watching NASCAR for, this race scratched your itch. This race washed away a lot of the bad taste that a lot of the storylines the past couple weeks and months have given us. This race, in my opinion, is an all-time classic. So, how do we build upon it? How do we get more of it? And how does NASCAR kind of just move forward after a race like this? Well, one, of course, you have to realize this race cannot be replicated 100%. Yes, there's good aspects of it, but this race, I think, was a perfect blend and a perfect kind of confluence of every single one of those factors. It's very hard to get all those put together, but there were a lot of good things we can look at. First off, the overall racing product itself. The drivers were able to use any racing line that they wanted during this, and they did. They used the top, middle, and bottom at different points, and it was at different points of run. It didn't matter really to them when it was, though. It was just a racetrack that was very racy. And with that, the high side, of course, was the preference as it's been at Homestead for the better part of a decade or more. But with that, other lines still could be used. We saw the middle being used as a defensive line. We saw people using the bottom line during parts of the runs. Hell, in the Xfinity race, we saw Austin Hill win that race more or less because his preference of the bottom was just that much faster. Once he got it hooked up with that setup, he was off and away to the races while everybody else was stuck up right next to the wall. And what this all led to was a great finish. No, this finish was not a three-wide finish like Atlanta. No, it was not the closest finish ever in cup history the way that Kansas was. But this finish had something in a lot of ways that I think a lot of fans, even in the purest aspect, can love. The great racing at the end led to amazing and aggressive moves by the finishers that were up front. Denny Hamlin getting the lead at first. Ryan Blaney, the dominant guy of the day, wrestling it away from him. And Tyler Reddick on a tire disadvantage coming up and taking it from both of them on the final lap and doing so in an amazing way. It was an overall great ending to a great race, and on the purest aspect, you can look at it like this, and this is why I think it was so gratifying to so many fans. It was not an overtime finish. There was not some stupid caution that led to this kind of finish happening. It wasn't like it was a debris yellow, or somebody had a flat tire, or so-and-so was scraping the wall out of turn two. No, this happened because there was a natural caution on the track for a driver pushing it onto the razor's edge and finally getting and cut, and that being Kyle Larson when he tried to take the lead away in the closing laps before the caution that he caused from Ryan Blaney, ending up spinning it out through three and four, but still honestly being in contention to have a good run. So I think that's something that a lot of people are going to look at and why it is kind of like that perfect storm for many people. The track, though, this is what enabled all of this. The old, weathered, slick Homestead Miami Speedway is one of the best tracks in NASCAR. When you look at these old, weathered tracks, they become slick on hotter days or warmer days. There's not as much grip in the racetrack. Drivers have to search for grip, and with it, drivers end up finding things. They end up falling back during runs, and you see the best of the best rise up, and that's what we saw in this race. The storylines of it, of course, it has to be the finish, but look at the way that it led up to it. At one point during this race, seven of the top seven were playoff guys. And it wasn't just, oh, a playoff guy that snuck through. No, it was the absolute best in our sport. Former champions, multi-time winners at the highest degree, some of the fastest of 2024. This was a race where the best of the best had to beat the best of the best. And that's what we as NASCAR fans want to see. When you strip it all down, it comes down to that one race each weekend we're all watching, and we want to see the best in the world do the best things. We want to watch ordinary men do extraordinary feats. And with that, 
you saw Tyler Reddick do so with a signature win. On a tire disadvantage, he was able not only to pass Ryan Blaney on the last lap, but also Denny Hamlin in less than a lap, about a mile's worth of racing. Saw Tyler Reddick go from third and seemingly done for to making an amazing move on the high side where he was faster than anyone really had been all day and take that momentum out of turn four to win over Blaney. And that's a signature win that's going to be played in his highlight reels forever. When one day he hopefully is put into the Hall of Fame, this win will be what they show. And some other stuff, you know, with the best of the best up there, with Reddick winning, with the guys who were running for the win, you had the playoff drama. So even those who are looking more on the playoff side, they can love it too just as those looking on just a signature and single race aspect can look. But there's one point that I don't want to be overlooked in this, and that's Carson Hosevar, the rookie who had his I'm here and I'm going to be here a while run. The run that saw him be the only one in the top eight at one point out of the playoffs, and he was a rookie doing this. Next to Denny Hamlin, Christopher Bell, Ryan Blaney, Chase Elliott, William Byron. That is impressive. And he is going to be a champion if he keeps this kind of pace up through his career. So how do we get more of this? How do we build on it? Well, obviously, the tracks need to age. The Homestead Miami Speedway was last resurfaced, reconfigured, repaved, whatever you want to call it, in 2003 with the track reconfiguration. And since then, the hot Miami sun, the brutal weather, and everything else around it over time has weathered this track down to perfection. When the car works, it works. The next-gen car on these tracks is amazing. I don't know what they did to make the intermediate so good, but we finally saw it shine at Homestead, a track that kind of like Las Vegas has lagged behind the likes of Charlotte or Kansas. So how do we get more racing like this? Well, we don't need to add second dates to different places. It's already spread pretty thin on the fan base already, and adding second dates won't help that. But you know, there is a certain mile and a half track that we could use, just saying, one day if a certain race ends its contract and we need a place in that market. Not gonna say anything else, just that I'm dying on this hill. But with Homestead, make it the finale. It worked before. It worked for the longest stretch of consecutive years in NASCAR history for a finale for a reason. The racing, the area, and the prestige of it all built up. An entire generation of NASCAR fans that are now probably between the ages of 25 and 40 grew up and watched racing with Homestead being the defining track to end the year. We need to get back to that. That's the fan base that's going to help you grow over time. You got to make them happy, and it worked before. Sparking more than likely a renovation would be a big thing when it comes to what this race could do. After all, there's about 19 or 20 months between the 2025 date and the 2026 finale. More than enough time to make Homestead's facility match its on-track product and make it a world-class racetrack. It's much more dynamic of a racetrack and an ending to the season than Phoenix. I applaud Phoenix for being able to sell it out and making a really great facility, but its time has passed. We need a track that can make a bit of drama and storyline carry through the offseason through to the Clash in Daytona. So that's where I sit on it. This is a race where everyone can be happy with it no matter what you're watching for. And if you're not, I don't know what to do for you. It might just not be in the NASCAR at that point. So with that, I'm going to pass it on to you. Where would you rank this race among the races in the 2024 season? Let me know down in the comments below. Is it an all-timer race of the year? You let me know. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video. Share this video and subscribe to this channel for more great and fun NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for your continued support. And until next time, have a good one.